Hello and welcome to Woodbridge, the best town around. My name is John McCormick. I'm the mayor of this great town. And once again, you're going to see today why we are the best town around as we kick off our Have a Heart Food Drive, something we have been doing uh, way back. I don't know how many years I'll let Peter explain that, but we started basically the whole food drive efforts way back with We Feed Woodbridge in 1992. And I say we, and I was working for the town then, but I had nothing to do with it, so I don't mean we. But I do mean Peter, because uh, Peter goes back all the way uh, to when this started. He's been working for some 30 plus years. Uh, he is the conscience of uh, food drives in Woodbridge Township and of food pantries and soup kitchens and everything else that this great township does for people in need. And I want to ask him now to talk about We Feed Woodbridge. First, I want to announce that we're already, we, we're kicking it off today and we already have $42,000 in. $42,000, which is, I mean, We've gone many years where we've made not even that much, and here we have it before we even start. So we'll talk about how we got that with some of the people up here. But let me uh, turn it over to Peter, have him talk a little bit about uh, the need for food and how uh, the food drive works and, and some other statistics. So, Peter, please take it away. Thank you, Mayor. But first, I would thank the mayor and the administration and the council for their support of WeFeed over the last 30 years. As the mayor said, WeFeed was founded in 1992 by uh, myself and four other members of other food pantries. Um, to serve a need, we, we were five different food pantries at the time and each do, doing our own thing. So we came up with the idea that we would network our, our resources, network our ideas, and that's where WeFeed was founded. And over the years, um, as the mayor said, in, I guess about 15 years ago, we started to have a heart food drive, which kicks off the first week in January and runs through Valentine's Day. A uh, very successful drive. As the mayor said, so far we've collected uh, from the business community and from private uh, citizens $42,000. Uh, we're currently uh, have 12 schools signed on of our 24 schools uh, that will participate throughout uh, January and February. Uh, we'll make visits to those schools with the mayor and take pictures with the kids as we get closer to the end of the drive. Um, we feed, currently feeds roughly about 1,400 families a month. Uh, we are a network of 11 food pantries uh, scattered throughout Woodbridge Township. So the need is great. It's, we make it very simple. Uh, we have drop-off locations here at the community center, uh, at the Woodbridge Public Health Center, at the uh, municipal building on Main Street, or you can call my office and we can schedule a pickup. Uh, we work with the business community, as some of these here makes very generous donations, but like I said, we work with just the average person making a, a simple donation of food or, or a monetary donation. Uh, the, the monies that we collect, generally we share amongst our food pantries at the end of the drive. Uh, they use that, uh, some of our pantries belong to the Community Food Bank of Hillside, where they use that money to purchase food at a very reduced rate. Um, some use it for gift cards. Uh, for families that are in certain crisis situations or have special dietary needs, others purchase food elsewhere as uh, for dairy or, or refrigerated items or meat, meat products. So the, uh, the need is great. As you know, the economy is not the greatest. And so uh, more and more people are calling and uh, tapping our food pantries, and that's why we're there to uh, reach out to those that are in need, uh, whether it's for a one, one-time deal or some people are there for a long-term deal. Uh, based on their family situations, family dynamics, ick, a sickness, a sick, sickness, or or any anything that would cause someone to um, create a need. But I would certainly like to thank our sponsors: uh, Sansone Auto Group, the Woodbridge Chamber of Commerce, Northfield Bank, uh, Columbia Bank, um, the Mayor, the Administration, all those uh, you know, big and small that make donations. Uh, no donation is too small. No donation is too big. And um, as I always say, you know, it's a, we are a community feeding a community, and it takes a community to feed a community. So, you know, on behalf that of the many volunteers, probably close to over 100 volunteers that man our food pantries on a regular basis, they're the, they're the, they're the workers behind everything that goes on. So on behalf of, of the workers and the clients that we serve, thank you very much. Thank you, Peter. So the quick details of Have a Heart. So everybody knows in Thanksgiving and Christmas and the holidays at the end of the year, there's a lot of attention paid to food drives. Uh, not so much right after that in the first part of the New Year's. So that's why the Have a Heart food drive was started. The heart connects it to Valentine's Day. And basically between now and Valentine's Day, we're asking businesses and or individuals to 
Uh, donate 214 stands for obviously February 14th, which is Valentine's Day. 214 pounds of food or $214, and that adds up to s some really, really strong numbers for uh, for people in need. But the one company that just far and away uh, exceeds that number, and, and this year gave the biggest donation they've ever given. They're always donating in the neighborhood of ten or fifteen thousand dollars, but this year Sansone's Route One Auto Mall has donated already twenty-five thousand dollars of that forty-two thousand we have collected comes from Paul Sansone and Sansone's Route One Auto Mall. They do so many great things in town. I could go on for uh, fifteen minutes about what they do, but just in general, it's the food drives. Um, way back in 1999, when we kicked off the concerts, uh, Paul had the idea of donating uh, a TV or some electronic item every Monday night, and people would bring a box or a can of food, and for each one they did, they get a ticket, and it's a raffle, except instead of money, the prize is usually that electronic item. And we have estimated that we've gotten anywhere between 40 and 60,000 pounds of food annually from those concerts. And again, summer is another time when people pay little attention to uh, food drives. Uh, so it's so important that we do it in the summer period. So we have Bob Data with us from Sansone's Route 1 Auto Mall. I'd like to ask Bob to come up first, thank him, and ask him to relay our thanks to Paul Sansone. Uh, and, and Bob, uh, please let Paul know, and I know you will, how much we appreciate all he does. He's got the, the, one of the best things he does is the Veterans Training Center. We all know what happens when people come back from serving overseas and the mental state that they're in. And when they're not able to find work, not so good things happen. But Paul has put hundreds of uh, men and women through his training to become mechanics, to become car uh, salespeople, you name it. Uh, he's just been wonderful for the veterans cause, wonderful for uh, food drive cause. We can't say enough about Paul. Bob, can you come up and say a few things about Paul? Thank you. Good late morning. Um, I've been representing Paul Sansone and the Sansone Dealership Group for approximately 25 years. And I've had many an opportunity to observe Paul uh, in terms of his benevolence. Uh, he is an extraordinarily generous person, as evidenced by the size of this check. And this is one to come. And that is, from Paul's perspective, this is a beginning. Uh, and we'll stay with the program, as we had for many years, and particularly today, representing to those here in the audience and the mayor and his support group, uh, that we'll be back. And we'll be back with another check, and another check, and another check, until such time as it is that you say, that's enough. And I don't think that will happen. No. <laughs> uh, I uh, am here on behalf of Paul Sansone, the Sansone Foundation, and the Sansone family. Uh, each of those entities are significant parts of the puzzle, excuse me, as it is that we put together our fundraising ventures. This is a very special place for Paul as it is for me, uh, and that is that we have our business here. We have the largest auto mall in the state of New Jersey, a little advertising mayor, uh, and it is that we uh, are prepared to recommit to this organization and others uh, who need funds, particularly veterans. Uh, and so with that, uh, I thank you for giving us the opportunity to be here today, and I hope that I'll see you again a year from today with another check. Thank you. Thank you, Robert, for promising a year from today. I was hoping to see you tomorrow, maybe 11 o'clock, and do another check tomorrow. Why not? What do you think? He said he'll do it again and again. Let's start right away. Are we ready for the check now? Thank you one again, once again to Bob Dato and Sansone's Route 1 Auto Mall. Next up from Northfield Bank, I'd like to call up Andy Circus, who's been with us for many, many years, always making a donation to this great cause. Angie, can you say a few words? Sure. Good morning, everybody. I, uh, on behalf of Northfield Bank, we're really proud to support this cause. We have been working with Peter for many years, and uh, we love nothing more than to reach out to the community and the underserved and being able to help. We are a community-oriented bank, and we love to uh, be able to help everyone in need. So anything at all that you may need uh, on, on the community level, please reach out to me. I would love to help out any way I can. And with the help of Peter, we'll be able to feed the 
the ones that are really needed. We're really, really uh, proud. And thank you to Peter and to the township for all that you do. We love being here. We love working here. We love living here. And it truly is the best town around. Thank oh, you. Oh, that a girl. And I'm not sure if I mentioned it, but Northfield Bank's check is for $5,000. And they brought their own check even. This is good. <laughs> I want to thank Wegmans for their participation. There's nobody here today from Wegmans, but I'd like to thank them. I'd next like to call up Councilwoman Debbie Meehan, who has been a big supporter of this food drive since she's been on the council. I'd say this is, I think, your 10th year? Going into my ninth. Going into your ninth, okay. Close. What's the difference? Yeah. Wait, no, it's not. No, it's is not. It? You had two fours and a one, and you're going into your 10th. Uh, well, that's why you're the accountant. That's why I'm the accountant, right. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Uh, let's let's bring up Fifth Ward Councilwoman Debbie Meehan. Good morning, everybody. Um, this is such a great program. Through the holidays, many of you that are out there in the audience, um, we work to help families in need, so we see them firsthand. We, you know, there's so many people in this community that do such good work for people in need, and uh, through the holidays, we just saw a tremendous amount of need of people that were hungry, just simply hungry. And with all the donations that everybody gives, it really does matter. We used to do, as a business in Colonia, bless you, um, we used to do uh, um, Taste of Colonia, but because of COVID, we haven't been able to do it for a few years. But we're hoping next year we'll bring it back. We were able to raise a lot of money, collect a lot of food. So just our little part from Colonia we're doing on February 11th, we are doing a food drive, myself along with Colonia Middle School, students uh, we're going to do a drive through food drive it'll be from 10 to 2 at the evergreen senior center so we're hoping colonia is going to come out and uh, do their part for the food bank and everybody that can give a give a small small amount like the mayor said and peter said any little bit helps and it really does matter to these families so thank you for all you do thank you to our sponsors and thank you to the community for helping I'd also now like to call up our first ward councilwoman, Sharon McAuliffe, who is just completing right about now her first year on the town council. She was appointed last January and got elected to her own term in November. So congratulations for that, Sharon McAuliffe. Good morning, everybody. Uh, this is a great program. It's very nice to see that the community gets involved. It's very important. I just worked with Debbie and Peter for the first time, really, on everything through the holidays of all the funds that we, uh, food that we ha got donated for Thanksgiving dinners, for Christmas dinners, as well as the toy drives that they ran. There's a lot of families in Woodbridge who really need help, and everybody's support is very important. Whether you can give just one peanut butter jar or a pancake mix, something that'll help out there. It doesn't have to be a big donation. The smallest amount also helps. So thank you very much, and I appreciate all your help. So one of the ways that we publicize this event is by contacting all of our houses of worship, all of our schools, all of our community and business organizations, the Woodbridge Economic Development Corporation, but our primary source is the largest of all those groups, which is the Woodbridge Chamber of Commerce, which has hundreds of members and, and companies on their mailing list that they're able to reach out to, and they just do a fantastic job with that, and we get so much from work that they've done. The new the leader of the Woodbridge Chamber of Commerce, the executive director is with us, Holly Church Doyle. I'd like to ask her to come up and say a few words. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you to everyone for having me here today. On behalf of the Woodbridge Metro Chamber of Commerce, we are honored to work with Peter on the We Feed Woodbridge campaign. The function of the Chamber of Commerce is to support Woodbridge Township and all of our surrounding communities. We have a great partnership with the township and that's why we work. If there's anything that anybody needs, please come and visit us at 91 Main Street and we will support anything that you need. Thank you.
Thank you, Holly. We also want to thank Amy Krasinski from Columbia Bank. She's formerly with RSI, but they merged into Colonia. She couldn't be with us here today. We don't exactly know what her donation is going to be because she is with a different entity, but we're sure it's going to be significant. CPV in Caseby, which runs a power plant down there, also donated $5,000. There's nobody here from PC, uh, CPV that was able to make it, but let's hear it for them and thank them for that contribution. And then one of the other large contributions so far is from the Woodbridge Corvette Club and Dave Edwards, the president, who's also not here, uh, but they have their annual event every October outside of the community center. They love coming here. They love having the access to this giant parking lot for uh, that event, and they're kind of paying us back by making a donation to WeFeed. <clears throat> I'd like to thank the schools that are participating, Kennedy Park School 24, Oak Tree Road 29, <coughs> excuse me, Port Reading 9, Avenue Middle School, Pennsylvania Avenue 27, Robert Masonic 26, Oak Ridge Heights 21, and Menlo Park Terrace School 19. The food pantry representatives from our 12 different, I said 11 before, but I've got 12 here, St. Anthony's of Padua in Port Reading, Heaven's Helper in Woodbridge, First Presbyterian in Island, Trinity Episcopal in Woodbridge, Evangel Church of Woodbridge in Island, First Presbyterian Church of Woodbridge, St. James Roman Catholic Church, Woodbridge, First Presbyterian Church, Avenel, First Congregational Church, Woodbridge, St. Cecilia's Roman Catholic Church, Island, Fellowship Bible Church, Food Pantry, formerly Elijah's Bread Food Pantry, and Trinity Episcopal Church Soup Kitchen. That's why there's 11 pantries and there's one soup kitchen. We have a whole lot of volunteers from those entities here. Maybe what I'd like to do is have us slide over and have all the volunteers just come up, and I'll pick on some of you and ask you to speak. So Jake, Rob, Pastor, please all come up and, and stand behind us here. I'm going to start with the only one up here who's got a collar. Uh, he's not wearing it now, but uh, Pastor Leslie Samuel from the former, um, what was it? Metro Park, Metro Park um, Assembly of God. Now it's the Evangel Church. They merged with a church in, in Scotch Plains. This young man is so good for the township of Woodbridge. We actually have a meeting today. And when I, they asked, why do you want to meet with the mayor? He said, to find out how we can help. That's the kind of person Pastor Leslie Samuel is. They help with tooling around. They help with all kinds of different events in Woodbridge. And I'd like to ask him to say a few words right now about the food drive effort. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and uh, town council and uh, my uh, fellow food pantries in the town as well, and uh, Peter Barcelona, who leads it. You know, uh, everything that we do uh, might feel like, as we, if we do things individually, it feels like a small effort. But when we combine our efforts, it makes such a big impact in the town. And I, I really believe that we can make an impact. And I, I want everyone that is uh, able to participate participate in some way, whether it's through your local schools or uh, whether through a local food pantry. It does make a Last year alone, we saw several hundred families uh, provided with meals. And um, you know, one particular uh, family story comes in mind. We had a, a volunteer take uh, food to uh, someone that was homebound. And they opened the door, and they had heard about the food uh, coming, but they couldn't believe that somebody actually had the compassion to uh, bring food to their door, and uh, they were in tears. I, I want you to know that the need is real, and the impact is real, and the joy in their faces is real too. And so this is really important, and uh, I want to thank uh, the leadership of this town for leading the way. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Now I'd like to introduce my favorite resident from Rahway. Uh, I've known Jake uh, from Avenel Presbyterian Church since I became mayor a while back and uh, met him through this event when we had our first Have a Heart Food Drive. Uh, he just does a terrific job. I wish he lived in town, but he doesn't. Uh, but I'd like to ask, now ask Jake to say a few words. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. You know you are my favorite mayor, even though I don't live here. <laughs> but thank you all for your donations. We really appreciate all the food. However, we appreciate the money also, because a lot of times people come to us, they don't have any detergent, they don't have any shampoo, they don't have any uh, uh, toothpaste, they don't have any paper products. So the money donations are great. So thank you one and all for your donations. We really do appreciate it. I've been doing this since 1994 and I love it. Even though, even though it's a volunteer job, I love it because the, the rewards are so great. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Good job, man. Good job. 
Um, I thank you. I mean, the mayor, the council, those who have donated to me, we want to thank everybody. Uh, I mean, so everybody understands during the pandemic, um, in our case, we almost doubled how many people were, were coming. Uh, fortunately, I mean, as that's eased up, things have slowed down a little bit. But there still is, as Peter said, I think it was 1,400 families. You know, it, the need in Woodbridge, I grew up in Woodbridge and wouldn't have thought of it, but as I got involved, you learn more and more that, yeah, there, there's a need out there. And fortunately, thanks to the contributions that are made and the support that we get from the community, we are able to meet some of that need. And so uh, we thank, we're all volunteers, but we say we thank those who support us uh, through their donations. So I just want to say thank you to all of those who are here. Thank you. Thank you, Ralph. Anybody else feel like saying a few words? I know I'm not trying to put you on the spot. Okay, we're good. One thing I want to ask, Oh, you do? Come on up. I'm just, this is I'm just going to, right? I'm just going to touch a little bit. Everybody, I did all everything they said. We thank everybody for all the donations, all the help from the town and political, non-political. Everybody is phenomenal with the help we get. One extra thing I just want to add, volunteers. Volunteers are essential. We thank every volunteer that we have come and gone, whether they're still with us, they did one day, or they did a week or a year with us. Every little part of volunteering helps us get it distributed and help those in need really get it. That's the most important thing. If anybody has nothing to do and needs to just get out of their house, call any one of our, our, our um, pantries and just volunteer. That's all. Thank you, Ella. So I want to, it's not part of the script, but I want to ask Peter to come up again. And I wish Carol Orlick was here, our chief of staff, but she's been working with Peter on a program to use the leftover food from schools and get that donated to the pantries. And it involves businesses. It's a wonderful effort. It's kind of in its infancy stages now, but I think it's worth saying what's going on there because it's really important. Yes, Mayor. Well, we're in the very early stages of a program called a food recovery waste program. So what we're, our goal is to tap into the restaurants, uh, larger restaurants that have food left over at the end of the day. They'll containerize that food container. Uh, recently, the mayor provided us with a storage place at the Woods Night to Columbus. So we now have a large amount of freezer and refrigerated space. And so we'll take that food to those places, which will be prepackaged from the restaurants, bring it to that storage place, and then move it to the food pantry. So that food can be either uh, refrigerated or frozen, depending on, on the logistics of when it comes to us at that point and when our pantries are open. We currently do that with Wegmans uh, and also some with ShopRite with the uh, prepared meals that are left over at the end of the day. So we do pick that up on a regular basis. It goes into our pantry network, um, and then it's either refrigerated based on the timing or it's frozen at, based on the timing. So. Um, I was appointed to the Sustainable New Jersey program. We were in Atlantic City in, in uh, November at the um, League of Municipality Convention. I spoke there, so it's an it's an uh, initiative that they put out uh, that we've picked up here in Woodwich, as the mayor said, with the chief of staff Carolyn Ehrlich, um, and we're beginning to run with that program. And, and uh, flyers went out this past month to all our uh, restaurants in town. So we'll be making uh, school cafeterias too, right? School cafeterias. School, school cafeterias currently are using a program called Share Table. So with the kids in this in our school systems, uh, you know, they get a, they get a lunch. There might be an apple and orange, or there might be some sort of dry dry cereal or whatever. It goes on a table called the Share Table. So the kids at the end of the day can take that food home with them at that point, so that food doesn't end up in the trash can. So not only are we we um, cutting down on the waste of, of food, but we're also feeding people as it goes home at that as the kids go home each day and so that's it we sort of we're sort of mirroring down now with the restaurants at that point so um we just had our first meeting last week uh so we're we're moving that program forward like i said all our restaurants received a pamphlet i'll be making visits uh, as well as our health inspectors will be providing uh sa safe transportation of that food to our food pantry so and that, talk about the fact that now <clears throat> we have a lease of the main floor of the Woodbridge Knights of Columbus, paid for by the township. Some of the money came from prior donations mm -hmm. from the food pantries. Yep. But now, because we have that refrigeration and that freezer space, we can do programs like right. this that we couldn't do last year at this time. Talk about that. Correct. Uh, uh, the mayor secured a lease on the Woodbridge Knights of Columbus on the first floor, so we brought in, uh, we upgraded the electrical in the building. Um, we currently have about 110 square feet of 
refrigerated space, 110 feet of freezer space. Um, over the holidays, when we get the influx of turkeys that served as a storage place, so it's a it's a it's a great location because uh, sometimes it's either feast or famine. So a lot of food comes in at one time, and our pantries have a hard time uh, getting that food storage into the pantry. So now we use that Knights of Columbus as our holding area, and then we feed it back out to the pantry. So it's beneficial, uh, one, like such as to have a hard food drive. So we'll be getting a lot of food in at one given time, and then we could filter it back through the pantries. Um, so it's, it's a great storage place. Uh, Debbie, we do a turkey drive uh, in November, so we stock those freezers with turkeys. Um, we recently got a shipment in from uh, Wake Fern, some chickens and stuff, so it w went into the freezer there. So it's it's really, it's, it's already paid off. It's been very beneficial to us at this point, so. The last thing I think we should mention too is um, we have a school teacher who was telling us about kids coming to her school hungry and not having, you know, the proper resources. So she worked with us and Public Works built five uh, mini food boxes and two of the schools have the food boxes. One of the apartment complexes in the town have a food box. Uh, one of the VFWs in town has a food box and I think this last one is going to another complex. But the idea is that the teachers of that school and hopefully the other school are having their own drives and we'll help them too. Yeah. But the food boxes are at the spot where the people are, which is, means they live there or they go to school there. And can I, maybe I'm not describing it right, but talk more about that. Yeah, it's a, it's a, po it's a point of service box. We have one at the health center what we've had for about a year now. So what we do is we fill it with non-perishables. Um, the teacher at uh, school 19 now we have a box at school 19 a box at school 25 a box at the ford's vfw uh sunnyview oval apartments in Caseby, and uh, we're looking to move one to the florida grove road manor right, right. it's built it's just waiting to be uh for uh, permission from the landlord to place it on site and then those boxes are filled on a regular basis and so um really not only the, the kids from that community but people from within that community if there's a need there's non-perishable food there that they can go take and it's also a box take what you want leave what you want so people leave food there people take it there so it becomes a it's a it's a no questions asked kind of a, uh, food source for people that are in that immediate area if whatever they need at that point so it's um it's a it's a national program uh, we brought it to the health center. Somebody brought it to the health center last year, and it's it's worked out well. So I make sure the box at the health center is filled on a regular basis, and the teachers are now ensuring that those boxes around the forts and the Caseby areas are filled as well. So, yep. Thank you, and thank you also. <clears throat> From this point a year ago, now we have the food box program. Now we have the freezer and refrigerator space. Uh, there's so much advanced so many advancements made in the whole area of service to the community you need with food it's just amazing so in just one short year all this has been accomplished i want to thank peter i want to thank the town council for their support all of the businesses all of the houses of worship i said in the beginning best town around these people behind me and the people in the audience are why thank you very much and please turn off your phones what's up man thank you very much <laughs>